I'm a student of international relations. I mostly study war and conflict. And whenever I read the newspaper, I read about war and conflict. Whenever I switch on my television, I read about war and conflict. It's not hard to get pessimistic about this world, this world that I study. There it is. But hitchhiking taught me that there is good in every single human being. And the reason for that is very simple. And that's also the reason why I am here today. Hitchhiking is all about random acts of kindness of total strangers. Put differently, hitchhiking is recklessly surrendering yourself to the goodness of man. Over the past few years, I've been given many of such random acts of kindness, also in conflict areas. I've hitchhiked over 40,000 kilometers through almost 90 countries um, during several trips. I've stood with my thumbs up um, at highways in Azerbaijan to Zimbabwe and from the North Cap in Norway to the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. To give you an impression how that looks like, this is in Finland, Sudan, Chechnya, Zimbabwe, where I sold my worn underwear for $35 billion, <laughs> Zimbabwean dollars, Kyrgyzstan, Iran, but also Syria and Ukraine. Now those both, Syria and Ukraine, were not hitchhiking trips, but journalistic trips. Nevertheless, also there, in those conflict areas, I've been given many random acts of kindness, and mostly receiving them. Now, hitchhiking became a way for me to experience the world in a very genuine way. It gave me an extreme feeling of happiness, an extreme feeling of love, and indeed, the road gives freedom. I felt free, I felt alive. But my goal is not to make you all start hitchhiking as soon as I finish my talk. My goal is to bring a bit of the hitchhiking spirit into your lives. Now, what is this hitchhiking spirit? It is simply engaging, overcoming your prejudices, and simply engaging with random strangers and building up mutual trust with them by both giving and receiving random acts of kindness. Now, when people hear that I've hitchhiked so much, they usually share the same reaction. Amazing that you're still alive. And then they want to know about all the negative things that happened to me. But to be honest, over all those thousands of kilometers I've traveled, I've met hundreds, no, thousands of friendly people, and I've had exactly zero negative experiences. To give you an impression of who all those friendly people are that took me along my way, I would like to show you some photos. If, of course, I get a ride, because for now it seems that I will still be hitchhiking next to the road. Oh, there it is. There are men, women, the elderly, students, and also kids. <laughs> From the police and the army to drug dealers. Muslims, Christians, Jews, and atheists working class heroes and millionaires, hippies and businessmen. So really, people from all walks of life you can imagine helped me along my journey. Now the fascinating thing is that as soon as you enter the car, there is this feeling of mutual trust. They trust me that I won't harm them. 
but also I trust them that they won't harm me. I can illustrate this by a very short anecdote of an older German lady who once gave me a ride, and she asked me, you're not crazy, right? <laughs> to which I replied, are you? <laughs> this feeling of mutual trust that is established within seconds, you could compare it to a little independent world. As soon as you enter the car, you open the door, you say hi, you close the door, and from that moment on, there is this little independent world within the car. So it's me, the driver, and maybe other passengers in the car. And because there is this little independent world and of this mutual trust, why is it there? Simply because I know, but also they know, that most probably, after I close the door, this little independent world is gone because we will most probably never see each other again. With that in mind, why would you not share your deepest thoughts, your darkest secrets, and your wildest dreams? And that's what happens. Because usually, after half an hour in the car, you know about relationship problems, spicy details about the children. To give you some more examples, once we had a ride from this Norwegian entrepreneur and he shared his new business idea with us, simply because he trusted us. Or once we got a ride from the driver of the ambassador of a country I won't name. Why not? Because the ambassador flew already to the direction, but the driver had to drive there. And he saw us standing there, he took us, put us in the back seat, and he said, okay, guys, these are confidential governmental documents. You can have a look, <laughs> but please, don't write anything. So we had a look, and what did we have in hands? A bilateral trade agreement between country A and country B. And he mentioned again, please don't sign it, but just have a look at it. <laughs> but what is the best thing about this little independent world of mutual trust? The best thing is that you also get rights from people that you would avoid in normal life. People you would avoid in daily life. Whether it is a racist in Namibia or a Salafist in Egypt, you simply get in the car. Why? Because as a hitchhiker, I'm not picky. I'm simply happy that someone stops for me. Whether it's a Lada or a limousine, I am happy that some random stranger is willing to give me this act of kindness. So you get in, and even whether it is racist or religious extremist, you listen to someone. You listen to someone, you ask questions, and you try to understand simply because that's the only thing you can show as a token of appreciation that he took you. Now, a year ago, I was in Finland hitchhiking with my girlfriend. And for a few days already, we didn't have a proper place to sleep, we didn't eat so much, and it became night already. But above all, it was extremely cold. We were talking to this Finnish man in his mid-50s, and he used, to be, or he used to be a professional football player. Now he was a civil servant working for the municipality. But he was also, as he told himself, an alcoholic. We just continued talking. It was a nice conversation. And then he asked, where are you guys actually sleeping? And I said, well, no clue, actually. And he said, well, you're most invited at my place. And I looked for a second at my girlfriend, and I knew that we shared the same fear the same prejudice. Can we trust this guy? But well, we were really tired, so we went with him, although we still had this little prejudice. But he made a bath for us, we fell asleep happily, and in the morning I woke up because our new Finnish friend, his phone was ringing, and he picked it up, and I heard him just mumbling, no, no, no. So I hang up the phone again, and I asked, like, hey, that was a strange conversation. Who was that? Then he said, that was my mother. Every morning, she calls me, and she begs me not to drink today. He stood up from his bed, he grabbed, walked to the table, grabbed the portrait, and he said, this is my dad. At the age of 50, he died of an alcohol overdose. And then he burst into tears. And what happened there did something very special to me. Because this man had given us a place to sleep, a grown-up man who could be my father, a man of 50 years old. 
he was standing there crying and showing his deepest emotions. It made me realize the following. How can I judge a person if I do not even take the time or the effort to listen about him, to him or her? Isn't it desirable that we live in a society where we try to understand, at least try to understand each other, try to understand people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different uh, religions, or even people we simply don't like? There's this beautiful quote of Abraham Lincoln that captures this very well. I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. I realized, I realized that everyone has a story worth sharing and listening to. And I realized that with anyone, a connection and communication from heart to heart is possible. Back to hitchhiking. Hitchhiking is like a roller coaster ride. As soon as you get in the car, you don't know what to expect. Maybe it will be fear, maybe it will be happiness, maybe it will be boredom, maybe it will be awkwardness. But as soon as the ride is over, one emotion is certain, and that emotion is appreciation. Appreciation that a random stranger gave you an act of kindness pure out of generosity. This person doesn't want anything back. As I said before, you listen, you ask questions, and you try to understand, just to show your appreciation. But as soon as you go say goodbye and the car leaves again to the horizon, you're left there standing alongside the road, still with this feeling of appreciation. Because you're like, what should I do with this thankfulness I have right now? And to answer that question, I go back to my first hitchhiking experience ever, because actually that answered my question what I should do with this appreciation. Together with a friend from high school, we decided to hitchhike after we went to a music festival in Hungary. We're full of healthy adrenaline, and a friend dropped us on the two-lane road to Slovakia, and we're planning to go to Krakow in Poland. It didn't really work out. Um, people were very friendly, they're waving at us, but they were mostly going to Budapest, and actually no one was going in the direction we wanted to go. So that night, we slept next, uh, next to the road, and um, we woke up early, and we started to try to hitchhike again. And that day, we were more lucky after a few hours. A Polish couple stopped, and they asked, where are you going, guys? And we said, well, we are planning to go to Krakow, but it's still more than a thousand kilometers, so I'm not sure where we're going to get it. And they said, well, we're from Krakow. You're most welcome to hop into the car. So we spent almost a day, a full day in the car with Anna and Piotr, the Polish couple. And they offered us drinks, they offered us food, and eventually they also offered us a place to stay in Krakow. So we did, and we had a lot of fun. They showed us around, we went to parties, we had nice conversations. But I also became very ill. It started that I was hallucinating in their bedroom, but later on I needed to see a doctor. And eventually I ended up in the hospital. But they took really good care of me. They gave me medicines, they, they paid even the doctor in the hospital for me. And when I recovered and it was time for me to leave again because high school started, I asked them, Anna and Piotr, how can I ever thank you for all that you did for us? And the answer they gave me is an answer I will remember for the rest of my life. You can thank us by giving a random act of kindness to a random stranger whenever you have the chance. Two weeks earlier, Anna and Piotr had been hitchhiking themselves through Turkey. An old Turkish man had made a detour of a few hundreds of kilometers simply to bring them in the right direction. When they asked the Turkish man, how can we ever thank you for this? The Turkish man gave the same answer to Anna and Piotr as Anna and Piotr now gave to us. By giving us a ride and shelter, Anna and Piotr had thanked the Turkish man. This is a fantastic idea of interconnectedness. We human beings cannot exist in isolation. Far too often we think of ourselves as individuals separate from one another, but we are all connected. 
And if you do well, it spreads out. Have a look at this circle here. And let's compare this circle to the world. If person A does something good for person B, and person B doesn't return the favor to person A, but gives it to person C, eventually person Z will return the favor to person A. After the random act of kindness had traveled the whole world. Now this might seem rather abstract, and especially on a world level, it is, of course, abstract. But it, this thought made me thinking, and I was wondering what would happen if you would add up all those random acts of kindness in one person's life. So I decided with two friends two years ago to hitchhike, to try to hitchhike right here from Groningen to Cape Town, South Africa. This is how we started. <laughs> Kaapstad, echt waar. Which reads Cape Town, really. Here, right here from Groningen, it took us 156 random acts of kindness to bring us here in Cape Town. 156 people, 156 people that all said, well, of course, you're going to Cape Town? Well, I'm just driving to the next village, but you're welcome to join, but I won't really help you. But in the end, all at together, all those random acts of kindness made us cover 25,000 kilometers, simply fueled by the goodness of man. These are some of those random acts of kindness. As I said before, my goal is not to make you all start hitchhiking when I finish my talk. My goal is to bring a bit of the hitchhiking spirit into your lives. Because wouldn't it be Desirable to live in a world where more often we give random acts of kindness to random strangers. We live in a globalizing world and the world's become smaller and smaller. But this does not necessarily mean that the world becomes closer, that we human beings are more connected with each other. Wouldn't it be desirable as well to more often Try to understand what's going on in the minds of people we don't know, that pe of people that we judge. Talk to people, talk to people, to anyone, to strangers, but also to people that you don't like. Because in the end, we all want to enjoy this ride called life. But we need to do it together. Thank you. <laughs>